of the Hard Rock Show. Yes. I'm Shane. I'm Andrew. And uh, we're going to be paying tribute to one of the greatest, greatest bass players of all time. Yep. In Cliff Burton. Of Metallica, if you don't know. <laughs> Formerly of Metallica, yeah. I guess. Sadly. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Cliff was just a fantastic bass player. He was a phenomenon. I mean, there aren't many bass players ever that treat the bass like a lead and guitar lead, yeah. and he was one of the ones that did it and damn did he do it well he the, if you listen to his playing anesthesia pulling teeth it's one of those tracks that so for me it's a personal standard of metallica's whole catalog it doesn't even sound like a bass guitar no in a, in a lot of the songs it sounds like a lead guitar yeah and he's just ripping it and as you know the guys from metallica it, he just shreds it yeah, it, yeah. it's unbelievable what he it's does Think of Cliff Burton. I think of the the uh, long hair, yeah. you know, just hanging in his face. Yeah. And just him, him, him just going absolutely nuts on the bass guitar. And he was one of the most spastic headbangers you'd ever see, yeah. as in in a good way. He would just go off. You would not keep going and yeah. going and going. And I remember watching Unreal. on Cliff them all or some of that about how he's talking about, oh, my neck's so sore, and his dad's going, well, you're banging your head up and down all night. What do you yeah. expect? <laughs> kind of thing. So it just it sums him up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, he was born on the 10th of February, 1962. Yep. Um, he was brought up in a musical family, I guess, you yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. He started playing piano at a young age. Yeah, that was his first instrument. Yeah, first instrument. Yeah. He was apparently pretty good at it. Yeah. <laughs> from what I've heard. Yeah. Um, he had a wide, wide, wide taste in music, like ridiculously wide. Yeah, and even the bandmates he worked with in Metallica were shocked at the range of what this guy would listen to. Yeah. Um, he listened to classical, punk, rock, yeah. country, jazz, metal, you know, he yeah. just listened to it all. And well, the two examples that, again, Metallica, because it's where we get most of the talk about Cliff from, the two extremes they brought out were the Misfits, which we were, he was a huge fan of. Yeah, the, the stories about him break, <laughs> breaking his steering wheel <laughs> in the car as he was drunk. <laughs> Air drumming to the Misfits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you go from that to bring out Beethoven, Beethoven. and Bach and things yeah. like this. Yeah, just you've got to wonder with that classical influence. Yeah, would he have loved to have been a part of the S and M? I, I think that he would have absolutely loved it. I do too. I agree with you completely, hundred percent. And I reckon that with Metallica's experimentation as the career has gone on, he would have flourished more because that would have been the ideal format for him to try and experiment with all these influences that he had going. Yeah. See a lot of people pinpoint him as the the heavy metal dude in Metallica. Yeah, but it wasn't the case. He might have no. been the, one of the biggest headbangers on yeah. stage back then. But yeah. he'd be going backstage and listening to Beethoven. And yeah, yeah, all that classical sort of stuff. Yeah, and he he just had that real eclectic sort of music taste, and he wasn't afraid to bring out a stereo yeah, and crank exactly. Beethoven yeah. and Mozart all the way to eleven. You know, yeah, it was just insane yeah. in that regard. But that's just one of the things is that we're talking about a guy who loved his classical music as well as the country and all the other stuff that he was brought up on. But he was also one of the most on the front foot characters you'll get. He told you what he thought exactly as he thought it. Yeah. There aren't many grabs of him around, but when he did get a chance to say something, he spoke his mind and he wasn't shy in coming forward about his opinions in any way, shape or form. And I guess that's why a lot of people think that he was the metal dude, I guess, so yeah. to speak. But it, he was just a really diverse individual and I don't think he gets enough credit in general. I think he's sort of been, there's a lot of tributes and stuff that go around, but he's sort of been a little bit left behind, I think, by the bigger names that have had a longer career and yeah. stuff. But he's, he's not exactly a household name as no. the, the Bon Scotts and Alex yeah. Presley's and, exactly. and all the rest of them. Yeah. But, uh, he deserves to be up there as much as any of the other guys do. Hence this episode now that we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, he, he made the jump from piano to bass guitar at the age of 13. Yep. And um, he was practicing for up to six hours a day, apparently. He's so one of those really dedicated guys. And you can tell, by the way, he plays and the way he comes across. Absolutely. Yeah. His uh, first band was called Easy Street. It was yep. a band that he started in high school and they did uh, Battle of Bands and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, he went on to join Trauma. Yep. Which is where Metallica discovered him. They. Uh, we're actually looking for a replacement for Dave Mustaine <laughs> yeah. at the time. Yep. And um, they went, went to this club yep. to see Trauma, not knowing what to expect. And yep. uh, they heard this awesome lead 
Yeah, <laughs> that's the quote. And, and yeah. um, they thought, oh, holy hell, you know, we, we need a new lead player. Yeah. And um, it turned out it was Cliff playing On base. base. Yep. And it was actually what he was playing at the time became the basis for anesthesia. For yeah, the that's what impressed him. So um, they uh, headhunted him instantly yeah. from that point on. and uh, The rest became history, as they say. Exactly. Yeah. The, the band relocated to San Francisco. To get to Cliff. Cliff. <laughs> That's how much they wanted him. They shifted yeah. their whole lives from LA to San Francisco just to yep. get Cliff into the band. Yep. But, um, yeah, that anesthesia we were yeah. talking about before, that pretty much sums up his style. Yes. A, a lead bass player. Yep. And it's good to note, too, that he did not play with a pick. No, it was always fingers. Yep. Yep. No slap bass and all that sort of stuff. He was just a straightforward finger player, and damn, he did it well. Yeah. The um, the intro to For Whom the Bell Tolls as well. That's yeah. Another great example of his lead bass playing. Too. Well, he was one of the first, or one of the few early bass players to start using a wah pedal and things yeah. like this as his effect. It's just there. Which you can definitely hear that wah. Oh, yeah. Something like uh, Call of Cthulhu, exactly. for example. Exactly, yeah, that's another one. Yep. We, we were just listening to that not too long ago. Yep. And, yeah, that, <laughs> That's all over that song for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, he played on the first three Metallica albums, as we all know. Yep. Kill Wall, Ride the Lightning, and Master of Puppets. Um, Allegedly, his favourite track was Master, Master of Puppets, Puppets yeah. yeah. Um, he did a bit, of, a bit of writing as well yeah. with the band. Yep. Throughout those three albums, he's got eight songwriting credits. Yep. And then, of course, on And Justice for All, which was the album Metallica did after he passed away. Yep. Uh, he's got the, a songwriting credit on To Live Is To Die. And that was his final credit with the band, his yeah. final piece. So, um, basically, after Master of Puppets, which a lot would say was probably the, the best playing that Cliff had done yeah. so far in his career, and it's debatable, I think a lot of his playing shone through more yeah. than Ride the Lightning. Very true, yeah. I would nice. agree with it, yep. Um, Ride the Lightning was very much... I don't know. It's a different kind of album to Master of Puppets. It is, yeah. Different very, very feel. different. Yep. But I think, yeah, Cliff's playing just shone through more on Rod Lightning yeah. than he did on Master of Puppets. Master of Puppets was a... It shines as, as a band more exactly, than yeah. one standout person. That's not to say that Cliff stands out on Rod Lightning above anybody else. But No. But each each person got more of their individual flavour through on, on exactly. Ride the Lightning as opposed to Puppets, which was much more of an engineered piece for all the parts combined. Yeah. yeah. But... Um, Sadly, on the 27th of September, 1986, while yep. on tour for Master of Puppets, Cliff was killed in a bus accident, yep. as we all know. Um, let's uh, have a look at this little tribute video that we put together for Cliff. Fitting time. Enjoy. We do what we want to do, you know. If they consider that selling out, then uh, whatever.
We're not trying to be something big and fancy, you know. It's just us doing what we do. I like to keep it that way. All right, that was just a little tribute video that we put together for Cliff Burton. Yep. A uh, very, very special thanks to Double Wide as well for Definitely. putting that together for us. Yeah. They, the they went uh, above and beyond to let us use that song. That's yeah. Solid ground off their debut album, 18 Years of Misery. Yeah. Definitely check those guys out. Yep. Um, some of the players that influenced Cliff Burton. Yes. Good list. Great list. Yeah. So some great, great <laughs> players on this yeah. list. Yeah. Uh, He's a butler. Yep. How from do you Black go Sabbath, yeah. obviously. How do you, and you can tell the influence there easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Steve Harris from yeah. Iron Maiden. It's another one. Another good one. These, yep. these are iconic bass players. They're yeah. not just unheard of no. people. They're household names. Yep. Uh, Betty Lee from Rush. Yep. Who is just another phenomenal player. Yep. You know me, I love Rush. I can't yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Phil Why Not from Thin Lizzy. Yeah. Exactly. That's a standout list. And yeah. and you can imagine, and that alone goes into showing you what sort of a fusion he was of all of these influences going together and, and becoming a really well-rounded out player and, and how good he was and, and able to take what they did and make his own style out of it. Impressive. And he definitely did that. Made his own. Oh, yeah. Completely his own sound. Yeah. Um, after his death, he's been uh, on a posthumously in a number of ways. Yes. Um, Anthrax dedicated their album Among the Living to him. Yep. And Metal Church also dedicated their album The Dark to Cliff Burton's memory. Yep. Uh, Dave Mustang from Megadeth. He was quite close with yeah. Cliff in the band. Yep. Uh, he wrote In My Darkest Hour. Apparently not long after he found out that Cliff had passed away. Yeah, and he wrote that really quick, as in in the space of an hour he wrote that song, apparently, yeah. 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 And um, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with his Metallica bandmates in 2009. Yep. Um, also Jason Newstead, who wasn't in the band anymore at the yep. time. And uh, Cliff's father uh, accepted, accepted the induction yeah. on his behalf. Yep. Um, there's also a biography. There's been a few Metallica biographies yep. over the years which go into a, a little bit of Cliff. But um, this one's called To Live Is To Die. It was also released in 2009. Yep. It's written by Joel McIver, or McIver. Yep. And uh, that's a full-length biography on Cliff Burton. Yep. So, uh, yeah, if you can find it anywhere, definitely check it out. There's also the Cliff Em All video tribute. Absolutely. And so like yeah. paid tribute to Cliff a lot over the years, but that's yeah. probably one of the biggest projects that they've done. Yeah, and that's just pretty much all about Cliff, obviously. It's called Cliff yeah. Em All, so... That one, we've seen that, we know that one, and it's a damn good watch. So if you're going to do one thing out of all of that, then check that one out for yeah. sure. Yep. But um, I guess this this year is the, the 25th anniversary of Cliff pa passing. Yeah. And um, basically right as you watch this video will be the anniversary of his death as well, yep. being the 27th of September. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to take this opportunity to pay tribute to a great man and... Someone who's influenced us in, exactly, a, in a number yeah. of ways as well. Yeah. I know when I was younger and I decided I wanted to play bass, it yeah. was directly influenced by Cliff yeah. because I was a huge Metallica fan at the time. I still am, but yeah. um, a lot of people will say, you know, Cliff, for example, was influenced by Steve Harris and yeah. his brother. Cliff was the one that made me want to pick up the bass, and I'm sure that he's made a lot of people want to pick up the bass. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. I only wish I had stuck with bass <laughs> guitar. <laughs> well, for me, I was always drawn to rhythm guitar yeah. so when I was playing it was always rhythm guitar and the rhythm section for me was heavily influenced by Metallica which was James combined with you know the bass of yeah. Cliff Burton in the early albums and so not as much of an influence but there is still that element there because it all ties together with the rhythm the rhythm section and how it all works in a band yeah. so but um yeah Cliff Burton the hard rock show salutes you yeah thank you um now, in sticking with the Metallica theme, yep. we want to, uh, I don't know if you remember some of our earlier tribute videos we did to Bon Scott and uh, Ronnie James Dio. Yep. We drag out a classic album. Dust it off a bit. <laughs> and uh, we decided to stick with the theme and we're dragging out Ride the Lightning. Yep. This uh, is one kick-ass album. Oh, from start to finish, yeah. it is fantastic. Uh, and probably no better album to drag out during a Cliff Burton tribute as well. Exactly, yep. As uh, he had six writing credits on this album. This was the most writing credits that he had on an album. So yep. 
obviously um, the most influenced by him out of all the ones he worked on. Definitely. Yeah. Now, um, I remember <laughs> when I first got this album, yeah. years and years and years ago, I hadn't heard a hell of a lot of Metallica yep. at this stage. I think the Black Album had just come out, and I think right. Sandman was all over the radio. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I went into a record store, I think it was actually Music Mart back then. Wow. You probably remember Music Mart. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time ago now, dude. Yeah, I was, I was still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I bought Ride the Lightning based solely on the artwork. I hadn't yeah. seen or heard any of the, the songs from the album yet. That's and it's a simple piece of art, but it is. it's was, amazing I was just how well. Looking at it before, yeah. and I thought to myself, you know, you can't really get any simpler than that. No. But it says it all. Yep. And that that was enough to drag me in back then. Yep. So now um, opens with uh, "Fight Fire with Fire." Yep. And anybody that was coming off listening to "Kill 'Em All." Yep. Going into putting this album on. Yep. Probably would have been a bit discouraged. I've heard stories that a lot of people yeah. were turned off. Yep, because it didn't have that same raw vibe. Well, because of the acoustic Yeah, true, yeah. A lot of people straight away went, this is Metallica isn't. and sold out. Yeah. You know? And I mean, how many times have we heard that over the years yeah. since? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a never-ending trend with Metallica, yeah. unfortunately. But um, yeah. I mean, once Fight Fire with Fire actually kicks in, yeah. it's fantastic. It had all the speed of Kill 'Em All. Yep, and much better production, but also much more... Uh, advancement from them musically to, uh, speaking. Oh, it was a, this album entirely is a massive advancement on Kill 'Em All. Yeah. You look at tracks like uh, "We're Whom the Bell Tolls," yeah. "Fate of Black." Um, "Fate of Black" is another one that I think they copped a lot of flack over. They the, did the suicide. Yeah. Not only that, but also the how mellow it was. It yeah. was their first ballad, and they did a, a lot of bands that are in this genre of music cop a lot of flack for doing something that's a little softer, a little more in depth and meaningful. And this song had that in spades, and it was, in my opinion, a standout track on the album. I love the song to death, and I don't care who says what about them selling out and going soft. You can take it and stick it up your ass, because this whole album kicks ass, and that one track is awesome as well. And if you pay attention to it and listen to it from start to finish, it gets heavy as hell at the end as well. It does, yeah. Um, Creeping Death is yeah. on this album as well. <laughs> Another one of my personal favourites. I yeah. love that track. That's probably one of my two personal yep. favourites on there. Um, the final track, the instrumental, the Call of Cthulhu. That's a beautiful song as well. Fantastic. Yeah. There's just not really a bad song on here. No. I'm even a big fan of the track Escape. Yep. Which Metallica have gone on record themselves as saying they don't really like. Yep. They've um, never ever played it live. No. Until I think it was on the Death Magnetic tour. They, they jammed, jammed it, it a bit, yeah, but not really. They played the entire song. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just even like that track. I don't know the reason why they don't like that track, but I don't care. I like it. It's cool. The whole album is cool as far as I'm concerned. You can't <laughs> put a foot wrong with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I know where you're going next. Yeah, another, <laughs> another song on the album takes me back to about 15 years ago when uh, two of us were about 16, 17. Yeah. We were both working in a, a fast food chain that shall rename remain famous. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, we used to work on the, the burger making bench together. Yeah. And um, <laughs> down in the back of the, the shop, there were these big CO2 bottles for the uh, post mixing. Yeah. <laughs> and every time someone had moved one of those or knock them together, there was this dong. And that instantly yep. it kicked us off into uh, <laughs> basically singing every part of For Who the Bell Tolls. With Start to riffs, finish. Yep. Solos. The whole damn lot. The whole, the whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> And everyone who saw us thought we were completely nuts because yeah. we were the only ones that knew what the hell we were doing. <laughs> and that was all we did. And we would do it over and over and over again. We did it for years. <laughs> but basically every time that song comes on, if it comes up on, you know, shuffle on one of our albums yeah. or something, we both look straight at each other. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, it takes, it takes us back to that, yeah. that day. And it's always good when a, a song can take you back. And stays with you. Into the, into yeah. the past and, and, yeah, it's <laughs> It's a special kind of... Well, for us, it is a special song. It, kind it, of screwed up memory. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, True. It's, it's fantastic, really. Well, it's one of those things that, as I've just said, it, it stayed with us, and we've known each other for a long time now, and this is that one thing that every time we hear that opening, that one, that gong, the, it's the just gong it's over. That, the gong that they would have heard at the start of the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, You hear the exact that, same one. and if you're ever with us in public and that song ever comes on, you're in for a treat, I'll tell you what, because we go spastic to this song. Absolutely. <laughs> but um, 
I guess there's not really a lot more we can say about Ride the Lightning. I mean, no. it's just a fantastic album. And then for anybody that's that's just discovering Metallica now, and you know, Death Magnetic might have got you yeah. into Metallica or whatever. And the back catalogue is extensive. If you haven't gone back to these earlier albums, I yeah. mean, Ride the Lightning came out in 1984. Yeah, exactly. It's a so long it's, time ago now. Yeah, it's an old album now. Yeah. But um, that is definitely worth going back to. Same with Master of Puppets, Kill, Kill Them All, all. Yep. and Injustice for All. Yep. The first four albums are regarded as the classic four albums. Yeah. Um, and I agree. I do too. I do, I do like everything they've done since. Well, that was when they were really, really thrashed. That was when they were raw and young and had all the energy going for them and all that sort of stuff. And then they decided, then they hit the Black Album, achieved success, and then they decided to branch out and stuff. But if you want that raw purity, those four first albums are the ones you, you really want to get a hold of. Yeah. When it comes to the, the great thrash albums, Master of Puppets and Slayer's Rain in Blood are always yeah. up there. And I think that Ride the Lightning deserves to be right up there as well because I think it's fantastic. I think it's an underrated album in those in those terms. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, I think we'll leave it there. Yep. So um, join us for more Hard Rock Show next yep. week. And until then, drink up. Rock on. Rock on.